Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is my long-awaited uh, trilogy, third part to my embroidery series where I go through some very basic beginner stitches or stitches that every beginner should know. Some of the stitches I'm going to show you in this one can get kind of complicated. I'm specifically referring to this one here where I've made these five dots. I'm going to teach you how to do a French knot today and this one was easily the longest it took me to learn. Um, there's just so many different ways to mess it up, but I think overall it is a really easy stitch once you get it down. It's just gonna require some practice. Um, and I'm also going to do in the middle here, teach you the lazy daisy stitch. And in the top left here, I'm going to show you a woven rose. Now, when you do the woven rose normally, you should only have uh, an odd number of spokes, but I did six here because I thought it looks kind of odd. Just know that I'm only going in and out uh, with five uh, different spokes. Here I'm showing you the kind of colors I'm going to do. I'm using purple for the French knots, yellow for the Lazy Daisy with some uh, off-white cream French knots in the center. And I'm gonna start with the woven rose with this like marsh green color and a nice dusty pink. So to start off, I'm going to knot uh, the end of my needle and thread it. So you can see, I do not knot the end of my needle. I think that's super important to make sure it goes in nice and easy. And very simply, you're just gonna create some uh, very basic seed stitches, which is just kind of like one running stitch in each direction. So I'm going up and down through one of my spokes, and then I'm gonna come back up through one of the new spokes, come back down, and just make some straight lines over and over again. Going in through my sixth here and tying it off on the back just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Next, I'm going to thread my dusty pink. Once again, make sure it's knotted at the end. And here is where it's more difficult to explain than it is to actually do. So first things first, you're gonna have to make sure your knot is in the back. So I'm gonna poke it through the center here and pull it up until I reach the knot. Now for the rest of this up till the very end, you're actually not going to poke your needle back through the back side. I have it out in one and I'm going to be skipping this bottom stitch here, that like sixth one at the bottom. And the gist of this one is to go under, over, under, over. So here I've kind of numbered all of them. Um, so the bottom left is number one, bottom right is number two and it goes around like that. So if you go right here, it looks like I'm going under one and then I'm gonna go over two pull it all the way through, make sure it's nice and not tight, but you know, taut we'll say. Over two here, and then I'm gonna go under three. Pull that all the way through. Gonna go over four and under five. And now that we're back to the front, this is why you need to have an odd number, because now that we're back to one, we're gonna go over it this time. And now we're going under two, under four, and then we're gonna go back under one the second time around. This way, all of the spokes are being covered. So this is super important. I liked the idea of having six to kind of create that even leafy look underneath the rows. But once again, if you are doing the stitch, you need to make sure you only have an odd number. And once you get good or comfortable with the pattern, all you have to do um, is stick it through a couple out of time Time and just kind of keep weaving around and around and around until you get a rose in the thickness that you like. As you can see, it came together pretty fast and I think that the green underneath definitely left a really cool look. And I love these because not only are they absolutely gorgeous, but they're like three dimensional and have such a cool texture. And if I could not say this enough, I love embroidery for the fact that it is so beautifully textured. It kind of raises off a little bit um, and it's just very, very beginner friendly. I love this one. It's probably one of my favorites and especially because I love this color combination, this like um, marsh green and like pink. Now let's move on to the Lazy Daisy stitch. I'm actually going to be doing the Lazy Daisy stitch with the yellow, like I said, and then be doing French knots in the white and purple. So for the Lazy Daisy stitch, you're gonna want a significant amount of thread. I actually ran out uh, partially because um, it got tangled up in the back, but also these this is gonna be very similar to uh, the chain stitch, where if you saw my last video, you'll actually see it in the top here, that is that top blue one, where we're going to be making loops and then kind of tacking them down. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, go up through the center, pull it nice and tight until you have your um, knot reach the back, and then you're gonna go back down slightly beside the hole you already made. And I think going down beside the hole is also important when you have the knot so you don't get anything caught. Now here I am measuring out my loop to go up to about that point. I'm gonna take my needle, go back up through that point and pull nice and tight so that I form this cute little loop petal shape. 
And unlike this uh, chain stitch where you would go back down through that same hole and create another loop, you're just gonna go straight through the back right on top and tack it down so you have uh, like a, a stick point, kind of like couching, like we did in the last one at the very top. So now once again, I'm gonna go up through the middle and back down through the middle to create another loop. I'm going to kind of measure it out, keep it nice and tight, go back up through the point that I want the loop to end at or the pedal to end at, pull nice and tight, go back down through the other side to tack it down. One more, nice and slow, up through the middle, back down through the middle. Don't go all the way through, keep your loop. Go up through your dot, catch your loop, pull all the way through until it's nice and tight, and then tack it down by going right on the other side. And I'll just do these last two. I added a sixth loop just for fun, and I ended up finishing off the flower by adding some French knots in the middle. I'm going to go a little more in depth with the French knots with this darker thread, this purple here. I've once again knotted it at the end and strung it through my needle. Now I'm kind of going to do this loose, th loosely the first time just to kind of show you the idea of it, but the important thing about this one is really to keep things nice and tight because your knots start getting lazy. Um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Loosey goosey, no bueno here. Make sure that you have everything nice and tight or you're gonna end up like this. Um, and end up having these weird little tabs kind of sticking around. Um, the motion is actually quite simple, but what makes or breaks the French knot is how tight you have it. So all you have to do for this one very simply is go up through the back, pull it nice and tight until you uh, reach the end of your thread. Now what I like to do is wrap it around from the, zoom in here. You're going to wrap it around your needle three times. Now to keep this as tight as possible, I like to wrap away from myself so I can really pull it. One, two, three around, and then I go right back down, right next to that hole that I did the last time. And I like to, as you can see, I'm kind of holding it right here until the very end and then pulling the loop through. And that's the way the French knot is supposed to look compared to what I did the first time, all loosey-goosey. The tension is everything. I cannot stress this enough. And when I finally got this down, I was basically jumping around my apartment. <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. Once again, pull away from yourself. Wrap one, two, three, back down through the same hole. Keep it nice and tight until you have it fully pulled through the back. And let go at the last minute so that it can wrap itself up. I'm not gonna speed any of this up. I'm gonna do these last two, walking you through the process still, because again, this is probably the hardest one I've ever had to learn. Up through the back, nice and tight. Hold your needle away from you. Pull your thread away from your body three times around your needle. Go back right next to the original hole that you made to come out. Hold it nice and tight and pull all the way through, not letting go until that last minute. This one kind of got folded a little bit weird, but it still looks good. Last one, up through the back. Pull it till it's tight. Hold nice and tight. Wrap it around, away from you three times. Go back down right next to the hole you originally made. Pull all the way through, only releasing at the end. You can see I kind of lost track of it there and it got a little bit loose. It's not as bad as that first one, but still not perfect. So um, French knots are probably some of the easiest ones to mess up, but I think they can add some really, really cool effects, like having them right here at the center of this flower to kind of create this like um, seed or like pollinated kind of look almost. Um, overall, I think these are some of the easier and more standard kind of decorative stitches you can know how to do. Um, I think the woven rose is probably my favorite followed by the French knots and then the lazy daisy stitch. Um, I don't know why I keep telling you my favorites. I just have some that I definitely prefer to use. Um, and I definitely think um, practicing the French knot is really what's going to get you good. As you can see, I did a ton of them here and you can tell a huge difference from some of the ones that I started with, which was closer to the bottom, to the ones I ended up with, which are closer to the top. Um, it takes practice, it really does. Um, but once you get, get it, I don't think it's something that's gonna go away. So I believe that is the last that I had in mind for my embroidery um, 
series, I guess, here. Um, as I learn more stitches, I might add more or just do some very simple uh, designs in the future. But that is all I had for this video. I wanted to thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you saw, feel free to like and subscribe. I post new videos every Sunday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So thanks again for watching and hopefully I will be seeing you then. Bye-bye.